Hey guys, how's it going? So we wanted to come out into the garden this morning. It's beautiful out today. Blue skies, not a cloud in sight. And give you a tour of everything that's going on right now. Our garden is still mainly asleep. I mean, trees and things are starting to bud up and leaf out just a little bit. But there's some really beautiful things going on, like these daffodils. And there's a lot of projects going on, like kind of a lot of chaos. But we want to make sure that we're showing you everything because it's all part of the process. It's what we have to go through to get to our goal, to get to that vision that we have, which my vision is not quite there for this front project. And that's why I'm a little bit freaking out <laughs> inside because, you know, sometimes I have to actually go through this process, kind of the destruction in order to kind of push me into figuring out what I want to do exactly. So I'm like halfway there. Um, but I wanted to show the daffodils first because this is the most glorious thing going on in our garden at the moment. These are ice follies from Color Blends. I was able to fit roughly 50-ish bulbs in each one of these containers. These are concrete containers. I can't remember the specs. We'll put it up on the screen. They're from Unique Stone. Uh, we planted these last fall. They're growing very oddly. It makes total sense, but I just didn't anticipate it. Every one of them looks like this um, because this is the south side of the pot. This is the north side of the pot. And it, you know, the sun in the wintertime, it's lower in the sky. So of course this side is going to heat up faster. Uh, it's going to get more sun because as these grow, they're gonna shade these. So we've essentially done a nice succession planting of daffodils. We're enjoying them from this view right now. We take the driveway this way, and when the north side is looking full and beautiful, we'll take the driveway from the other direction. But really, this is exactly how I wanted it to look. Just big bouquets of gorgeous daffodils. Uh, we had enough left over to plant roughly 300 in my parents' garden. This is my dad's favorite variety of daffodil. Um, and on Easter, they were in their full glory. So I took a little video. Maybe we can put that up on the screen. I think we'll head toward the front yard, but we'll go through Versailles Garden. Um, just to give you an update on the gazebo, because that is still here, clearly. We're hoping that it's gone in the next week or so. We haven't really heard an update. Things just keep getting pushed out. You guys know how it goes. Um, so we can't really start our groundbreaking kind of-ish until that's gone, um, which it's fine. The greenhouse isn't here yet. It's still in route. I don't even know where it's at at the moment. But my like realistic goal is just to have the greenhouse in, in and functioning by fall. I think that's all we'll get done this year. And actually that's really nice because of everything else going on. It really gives me peace to know, you know what? We're just going to get the greenhouse in and that's it. I can think about the landscape later on. If we happen to get some of it in this fall, that's great. But if not, we'll just live with it for a little while so I can really think about the design. And that's the thing about this garden space here. I think I'm gonna be keeping everything pretty much the same just because I don't know, I need to see the greenhouse in its spot before I want to start reshaping flower beds. I'm probably gonna be cutting out new flower beds in front. Um, I just don't know exactly how that's gonna go, but I do love this view. And I'm focusing on like smaller views this year just because of how much destruction we have everywhere. But I love this. I love the Hebe fountain with the beautiful uh, Weeping Willow, which is always first to look alive in the spring. And then you can see the fountain through there and you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it. It's wonderful. Uh, and it does look very peaceful. And soon all of our flowering things will be leafed out and blooming and filling up their space. It can be really weird in the spring. I don't know about you guys, but I get this urge to go down to the garden center, just load up the truck. Like just bring truckload and truckload of new things home because everything looks kind of so empty. But if you just give it time, like there are plants there, you kind of forget they're there until they start pushing new growth. So we have to like, rein ourselves in a little bit. That's why it's a really good idea to take pictures to remind yourself throughout the season how your flower buds actually look. Because I actually, and Erin, I don't think I told you this, I um, dug up lavender from in front of the gazebo and planted it around the chicken coop flower beds. And someone's like, didn't you plant Nepeta right there? Yes. Sure enough, I went out there and looked, there's a Nepeta like right up next to one of my lavender that I, I didn't even see it when I was in there. It must not have been pushed yet. Um, so I'm gonna have to do a little moving in that flower bed. And that's the thing, if we do too much too early, then we regret it. it. Creates more work for ourselves later on. I really do like the Versailles garden. I like the simplicity of it. We put the boxwood hedge in. These are sprinters about four years ago. They were really itty bitty. Um, they filled in beautifully. We haven't had to replace anything. There's one right here that looks like it's a little bit smaller than the rest. And I think that's because it wasn't getting proper water until this last year. Um, it didn't have any drip and the only water this was getting was either by hand or by sprinklers, which 
was being blocked by this, right? Yep. Yeah, so the sprinkler would come through and it would water all of these on either side and in the front, but it would block it from hitting right here. So it kind of makes sense that this one's like a tiny bit behind, but it should catch up. Um, but yeah, I just love, I've always loved this garden. And the tree, we have had a couple of people ask about this, so I wanted to just touch on it real quick. The locust tree that Aaron bolted together is doing great. So check this out. It cracked from here all the way down to here. And how big do you think that gap was? It was pretty deep. Pretty decent pretty size, wide. like an inch or two or something like that. It was like really wide. Aaron got it bolted together and it's all attached together up top there. And I kind of expected to see some something. I expected to see at least half of the tree start to yellow up early and maybe drop its leaves early because of stress. This tree showed no sign of anything. And we had horrible wind, like right after this happened, we've had horrible wind this spring. And so, I mean, you never really know. I expect it to leaf out really beautifully this spring and we'll see, I think the stress, if it is stressed, we'll see it come out when it gets really hot this summer. Um, but I don't anticipate it showing any of that. It's just been such a, I'm so thankful. I was not ready to lose this tree. Um, the other thing about trees, speaking of that, is this big pines that we had removed. I thought I would miss those a lot more than I actually have. I think it was a, a load lightened because of the blight that they had. And I was looking at these needles that were half brown all the time. They're dropping on the ground. And it kind of worried me thinking, well, one, I've got a diseased tree and I've got kids playing in the yard. We get really bad wind. And then I'm going to have a glass greenhouse right below it. Is that really the safest thing to have right there? Probably not. Um, so I'm really looking forward to putting in some things that we really like and things that do really well here without a lot of uh, hands-on, in terms of big stuff anyway. Okay, let's head up to this yard because this is the most drastic change at the moment. There's just, there's trenches everywhere, everywhere. It all is going to lead to fun stuff. So, massive trench all the way up to here. It cruises right through the yard. Um, they ran into a surprisingly few, like I think they placed it, or I think you told you directed them where you wanted it, didn't you? Uh, I, for the trench? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think you did a good job because it's like directly between the two canopies of these trees. So we didn't run into any huge right. roots. So I'm hoping that the trees are okay because we're saving all the trees that are up here. Anything that's big and established is staying. Um, just a few of the little flower bed, you know, some shrubs and things. I am relocate, working on relocating some things still. Um, and I, around the gazebo too, the other day I dug up 45 perennials from around the gazebo and got them all planted in other places in the garden. So I'm just like utilizing every little pocket of time I can to come and move some things around. But anyway, Erin, if you want to switch me spots, kind of want to explain what we're thinking. Now this isn't gonna happen right away. It's kind of on our list, but we would love to have a wraparound porch built onto the bottom of this house. So it'd be built up right to about here, right below the siding. And it'll come out, it'll cover the concrete. It'll come out just, just beyond the, the pillar. And then we're gonna put in a walkway, middle, midway, right in the middle of these two pillars. It'll come out, so we will step down on one step. It'll come out and it'll curve around roughly in this area here and it'll connect to the Versailles garden and it'll probably maybe even fork and it'll go out because we are going to put in flower bed from this side of the walkway all the way out to the lane. So it's going to be a super big flower bed, super deep, um, just because on this side, we can show you the grass under this ash tree. It's really hard to keep things looking really uh, full because we've got roots coming up in the grass. I mean, it's all irrigated, but it's shaded. And I don't think that they use the proper kind of grass in the shade. We usually use red creeping fescue for that. It was probably the right type of grass when it, uh, when they when planted it was first the tree. put in. Yeah, that's true. You kind of have to plan for that, don't you? Well, like I don't know that you can really plan for it. I think you just have to change as the tree changes. I wonder if you could like, as the tree is shading more, you could toss some red creeping vescue grass seed like yeah, in with yours. But you can see like it's patchy and it really doesn't bother me, honestly. Uh, but I think it would look better to have it be like a dry shade garden with a pathway through it, maybe a little seating area and something I really want to do. I've, I've wanted to do this since we moved in. There are some dead branches I need to cut out from the bottom but it's the perfect little like secret area for the kids that if we could do some kind of like a fairy garden under there, they would probably love it because these kind of shroud and it is, it's just like this little 
private little area back in there and I would have loved that. My mom would do like sunflower houses and things, but we never, I don't know that we had a tree this big. Do they have a tree? They have trees this big now. Yeah. But not when I was little, when I would have really enjoyed that. So I think the kids would really like that. And to have a seating area out here nearby would be really fun, but I really don't know how it's going to come together. I mean, to be completely honest, I just kind of need to have it be ripped up. Sometimes I need to be forced to make deci- <laughs> to make decisions willingly. I'm being willingly forced to make decisions here. Um, okay, so the trenching, you can see it out on the new property. And it goes all the way around the interior of our new lawn area. So this driveway is going to be gone. Uh, we're reusing this gravel on the new driveway. And so our driveway essentially comes down the lane, goes all the way around our house. And instead of cutting so close to the house, it goes all the way along where that trench is out to the lane further down. So we just essentially created a massive yard. And we're going to have a lot of grass in here, shade trees, flower beds, a place where the kids have room to play like soccer with their friends and things like that. I'm so looking forward to that. Um, But the trenching goes all the way across our lane to the fence so we can have electrical over there. And water. And water. See, this is why I asked Aaron (laughs) to wear a microphone. (laughs) Aaron is spearheaded this project. I Uh, I know roughly what's going on, but you know kind of the ins and outs. But so essentially what you've done is made sure that we could have frost-free water available wherever we might need it. Mm -hmm. And then electricity in case we want to up like trees or put in a water feature or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever we end up doing. Well, it's all dirt now. So I thought that putting in the conduit to run those things, like now is the best time. Look at this. So there's two that take off toward the house down there and then there's so there's four over there so there's actually nothing in this conduit um it's just for future proofing yeah if we want electrical which i we will i know that i know that we'll fill this conduit but it may be a little while before we do and it's so worth it i mean it's one of those things that's just a huge bummer to spend money on because it's it's stuff you don't see in the end Um, But to do it at this point when you have so much going on and it's already ripped up anyway is so much better than doing it later on after it's everything set up. You know, can you imagine like getting your sprinklers in and getting everything, the grass growing and then thinking, I really wish that we had electricity over there. Yeah. Or a frost free line because then you'd have to trench trench four feet down. And you'd be tearing through all your sprinkler lines. Yeah. Which is what I would end up being, I would end up in that situation like 100% of the time because Aaron is a planner and uh, you organize these kind of things really well. I don't even think about it. We make a good team that way for sure. Um, Not that I love this part. I mean, it is kind of hard to see your space be torn up, but I do have to say because I did see some comments throughout the last little bit as we've been talking about it, like all your hard work going, you know, but really we've just kind of been maintaining what was here for the most part. I mean, we've put, put in some plants and things, but like structure wise, nothing in here was stuff that we put in. They were all, yeah. I mean the boxwoods, we put in the boxwood hedge, we, we pulled out the privets, which was structure. But even then it was just replacing where the privets were. Right, we were just kind of like patching the gap between yeah. that. I mean, it's taken five years to get to this project and we never even knew in the beginning if we would ever be able to own the pasture in front of us. So anyway, it's been a, it's been a process. Um, but I'm very excited about the front here, a little nervous mostly excited, but we're tearing up the sidewalks, a lot of them, while we're at, while we're at, it makes me nervous whenever you, Aaron's like holding the camera and trying to maneuver the trenches at the same time. Don't fall in. We are taking the sidewalks out from this point right here where it turns from natural to gray. So this slab will be out as well as all of this and the walkway up front. And we're replacing it with the brick that we have been using, which is right over here. I'll show you. So, you know, we did a brick walkway on the west side two years ago, and then last year this was our spring project. There's a brick walkway with a circular little design, and I really love it. And I've been working on putting more plants and stuff in this area. That's what I'm, that's what I'm focusing on this year. Small areas. I want to kind of finish those up. But everything from this point forward is going, and we're going to be putting in walkways that match. So it'll be more brick walkways. There will still be an access out this way. I'm not sure if I'll reshape front flower beds or not. We'll have the opportunity if we decide to. But it's going to be nice because this is something that has kind of bugged us for a while. There's pink concrete here, gray stairs, natural concrete, 
pavers. I'm not really sure at what point like everything was done. Oh, and the pink goes from natural to pink to natural to pink to natural. It was every other uh, concrete slab was a different color. I kind of want to know the thought process of who did this project and was like, nope, we're not going to pull that out. We're going to leave it one. and we're going to put the pavers around yeah. it. Yeah, like it would have been easy to just at least take this one up or take this one and this one so that it, like the landing was the same. Yeah. Who knows? Whoever did this did not have OCD. No. <laughs> we don't. Nope. <laughs> um, if you look at this from overhead, I would have never noticed this. But the front walkway, Aaron, from the very beginning, he's like, I swear this isn't straight. And I told him, like, over and over again, yes, it is. It's straight. It's fine. And it's not. It actually comes out. I think, does it go to the right? Yeah, it does. So it comes out and kind of, like, veers off a little bit. So I think he's very much so looking forward to having it be, this part of the walkway be a little wider, be straight with the house and the stairs, and then it'll come out. And this is something that Aaron and I have been talking about, kind of debating where the walkway should go. And I think we have decided to bring it out a little further and swoop it to meet like to face the other walkway that's coming out the west side and here's the reason why at first he was thinking Aaron was thinking of doing the walkway out and then underneath the tree canopies which would be very I get that I mean we can still do the same thing because there's gonna be massive flower beds around the walkways but I think for the scale of this piece of grass and the scale of the house we need to have things be a little bit longer and bigger to, to make sense um, and I think that you've come around to that and that's what it is like Aaron and I just have to like talk about things for a while and oftentimes I come over to your side because yours usually make more sense <laughs> than my than what I'm thinking but I do think in this case it's gonna look really good it'll look like a continuous idea too instead of having one walkway come out to the driveway and the other one come out before it it I don't really want a bunch of walkways just facing the driveway I kind of want it to look like oh it's like a continuous it's drawing me into another garden if that makes sense um, I don't know if we need to really walk out to the cut flower garden. There's really not a whole lot going on out there other than, do you think we should run out there? Yeah, maybe at the end we can uh, hit the high tunnels. Okay, let's just head around this, the garden on this side, and then we'll probably grab the gator <laughs> and run out there. They did a fantastic job because you guys, I'm saving all of this stuff, even the perennials in this area. The walkway is going to come out and cruise through probably right here. Um, and then I'll probably have a little piece of grass in here, but the rest of this is all going to stay. The red point we've planted, the centara double blue lilac, the honey, ghost honeysuckle, hollyhocks, which come up in the, just absolutely beautiful. Um, but they did a beautiful job. They took a trench yesterday from the big trench all the way to the corner of the house. Um, and they really were lucky. We have some really good professional people around here, electricians and our arborists. I mean, so good. Hardly looks like they've been here when they've done big jobs. Uh, the west side, you know, we pulled up bricks and had to cut the walkway because it, before we removed the fence at the end, the whole road cu uh, curved. So this actually came out, well, you can see it came out this much further and it was kind of curved in shape. And then there was more bricks lining the flower bed all the way to the fence. So all of those were taken up. Um, we moved the savanna urns from the front of the arbor uh, because we've got to, um, the arbor's coming out so I don't know Aaron you were kind of telling me yesterday you kind of want to move these it's too much concrete you, you know with so? the esplanade urns in the background esplanade yeah we found out that's how you say it are you sure it's not esplanade <laughs> I'm pretty confident I don't know I think that because we're going to be planting some stuff in here they might stay here for just a season maybe Aaron's like no <laughs> I don't know we'll figure out what we want maybe we can flank an entrance to the cut garden with yeah. these that might look really nice they can go somewhere uh, we just finished this project a couple days ago. Um, we just kind of roughly mulched. They actually had a trench through here. Aaron told me that after we had the project done. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. so they're going to trench. I'm like, oh. In fact, Laura wanted to plant right over here. In that video, I was like, oh, I've got a good 10 feet where I don't have any infrastructure. Like there was this little bubble where I could put this beautiful evergreen. Nope. I didn't realize that they had to trench over here and put an electrical box right here. So. Anyway, plan B, it's fine. Um, and see, they did a really good job. I need to bring in a little bit more mulch to cover over some of the soil, but like you wouldn't know that they had how deep of a trench in here yesterday. Like a two foot trench? Two foot trench through this flower bed. So yeah. Anyway, the daffodils are beautiful. I can't remember what variety they are. 
but they're just kind of mass planted in here. Now we have it as we enter the other part of the garden, we have been pulling up drip line in all of our flower beds to replace it. Uh, well, not all of our flower beds, in the flower beds where it wasn't functioning properly and it got torn up here. We need to still mulch and run drip lines. So we're really in the deep throes of garden structure. I told Aaron, like, can't we just wait to do the tour until at least it's mulched? He's like, nope, we should go out and do it now. So you have Aaron to thank for this tour, really. <laughs> I don't I don't typically like it when there's tubes showing and stuff. You guys know how it is. Oh, but the arms look so good. They do. The height of them, they're creating the wall that we wanted. The whole like arbs changing size right here. I had a different plan initially when we one didn't know we were gonna be able to take power poles down. Um, two, we didn't know we were gonna actually own that property up there. And we decided, well, I decided to stop the arb line and then I was gonna plant like a different kind of evergreen about right here, a big blue one probably. And it was just gonna kind of like, the arbs were gonna disappear behind it and then I was gonna do mixed border over here. And then when everything kind of changed, we decided to pop some more arbs and they'll eventually catch up. But right now it's kind of sad and I kind of wished we, but there's just no way to know though. Sometimes there's no way to know what's gonna happen in the future and you just go with it and it's fine. Make do. What I did not plan very well for was this. Like, you can hardly tell there's anything in these pots unless you look at them from a specific angle. Um, so I'm gonna take these out and I think we might put boxwoods because I've got nine other ones in the ground by the gazebo that need a new home. And I thought, well, what if I took those nine up and used these four? That's 13. No, I have 11 over there. So I have enough boxwoods that are roughly the same size. I could use them as centerpieces in those big pots with the daffodils. I don't know if they're quite big enough. Well, they'll get big enough. They will, but do we want to keep something in them as long as I'll take to get big enough to be the right size? I don't know. I just don't know. Anyway, I do know though that the green and the green, it's just, it's not a good look. I need to do something different. And the tulips, uh, first two, the first two bump outs, like I don't want to, to cast shade or throw shade on anybody but I did have help planting tulips when we were doing this and these first two bump outs I wasn't monitoring very closely and all the tulips got planted upside down and so we tried our best to come through and plant it was my fault I should have like been a better teacher I guess <laughs> I don't know um so I came through with him we tried to write as many as we could so these don't look quite as full as these down here but either way I'm thinking I would like to try something different. See, these are coming up a little bit of blooming. They're almost kind of starting to look the same a bit. These look pretty darn good. They haven't really started to bloom much yet. There's just a few little blooms, but these are definitely thicker on this end. I think I want to try something with more color this next year. So I think we'll just leave these here and just plant more bulbs right over the top of them and whatever survives the planting, they can still come up. Anyway, I think that that's how we're going to um, deal with this right here. This is the Vidal mix, which they come back fairly strong, but our tulips the last few years, and I think it's because our, our winters have been too mild, but all of our tulips are just staying really short. Uh, and I'm so happy that I went heavy with daffodils this last year. I planted hardly any tulips because the daffodils are always very, um, uh, consistent. Tulips are a little bit of a, a weird deal for us some years. Um, anyway, I'm really happy with the winter structure over here and you can see like the drip was pulled out of this flower bed and then a grid system is being put in but it was stopped here because I don't really have anything else planted between here and the other end. So we'll just add drip as we need to and as it's most efficient we don't want to waste a bunch of water for no reason. Vegetable garden is full. Oh my hose is all Usually I go around and coil up hoses and stuff. Oh well. Anemones are coming up really nicely. The ranunculus are coming up beautifully. We've got onions in that bed, tulips in this bed, garlic and cabbage, more ranunculus here. Um, we had a bunch of wind yesterday. We've got carrots planted in here as well as some beets. There's bunching onions and kale, more cabbage, those poor things. More cabbage and garlic, the greens that are absolutely gorgeous. I still have bricks out here because we, we do have a night that's supposed to be 28 in like a couple days. I thought we were past that, but I might run and grab some cloth. I left the bricks thinking that we might have a few more cold nights. So I usually pin the cloth down over these with the bricks. 
tulips here, there's spinach and peas planted here, and then more onions. Um, over here, you know, I haven't really done much. I planted a couple little perennials. I haven't decided what I really want to do with this area. It's kind of awkward, really. I mean, Paul did a beautiful job. Paul came through here and he did the brick edging um, from the boxwood over here all the way around. And we're gonna seed some grass in here just so it's at least a full lawn. But I do need to maybe cut out some flower beds, like maybe reshape this a little bit and reshape this one so it's deeper. But Benjamin loves to sit out here. It's like a really great spot to sit and lay in the grass. And it's perfect because it's right in front of the greenhouse. And when I'm doing stuff in there, he I just see him out here with one of the cats usually, laying on the grass, just kind of like looking around, playing with the cats. Like he finds a little branch and plays with them. And so I kind of want to maintain that, even if it's an awkward shape. I don't know what your thoughts are. Yeah. It's kind of weird too because it's driveway that we use we use this area heavily in front of the greenhouse so we don't really want to take any of that and make it flower bed although it would be pretty to have flower bed like right up to the doors of the greenhouse just wouldn't be practical probably not practicality wins sometimes so these bulb planters they are coming along i mean the daffodil ones i was just thinking i need to move those um, somewhere where we can enjoy them, but the rest of them are coming. It would have been better had I kept them. I couldn't keep them in the greenhouse. It stays too warm. They wouldn't have grown properly. Um, out here, I think they stayed too shaded and too cold to come up sooner than the rest of mine. I think maybe next year, if I do fewer, probably, and keep them in the barn. What do you think? Like, Well, we didn't have room in the barn, remember, because we were moving things around. Yeah, I mean, this is just where we had to keep them, and it's fine. I think we'll still enjoy blooms, even if I just use them for cutting, like cut flowers or mm -hmm. whatever. I think it'll be great. The alliums are growing amazing. I'm so excited. So, I'm not sure where I'm going to put these. <laughs> I was thinking of putting them on the west side, kind of like that juxtaposition between the esplanade urns and, like, the galvanized trough. I was going to put them along the long stretches of boxwood, like, in between the maple trees to have these beautiful big purple blooms but I, they will block the view of the esplanade urns. I don't know. They'll probably end up out in the cut flower garden. Either way, I'm super excited about them. I ended up, so last year we had these three and we put bark nugget stuff in the bottom. You want to laugh, but every time I say the word nugget, I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, um, we put bark nuggets at the bottom to help like save on soil and make the containers lighter. Totally not worth it. We took all of that out, dumped them all out. We tilled them into the new property and we filled these from top to bottom with soil. It's just better. It's better for drainage. It's better for uh, the root systems of your plants, even though these are rather deep. Um, they just help uh, maintain moisture and help with nutrients and all of that. What so, did you not like about the nuggets? I think it helped. It, or it helped. It made the water just like shoot out. Like my containers were not holding mm. water like they should. And I didn't have like deep rooted stuff. I had some strawberries, plain the blue salvia dahlias. Um, was that it in there? They were full of stuff, but it was not stuff that needed necessarily root, root room all the way to the bottom. But like we would start the drip system and immediately we'd have water running through the hole and we'd have a big lake. And then I felt like the top would just dry out really fast. Hmm. So I don't know. I, maybe it was just the wrong thing to use on the bottom. Anyway, I, I feel better about having soil top to bottom. It's typically what I do. Um, let me just show you a few of these. We do have labels. Like this one is called Cornish King. In fact, I think that's what's at the end of the west side. Those are looking beautiful. These are uh, Casada. Absolutely beautiful. So their inner roughly petals almost match the outer ones, like in size. Usually when you have a center, they're like, you know, smaller, like more of a cup but these are so delicate looking. And that's what I have here as well. So they range, they come out um, looking brighter and then they mellow out to this lighter color. Those are all casadas too. So you can kind of tell too the difference between early bloomers and late bloomers. So we've got the early dafts and then like those are full of, da of tulips um, and then some daffodils that are a little bit later blooming. And then just real quick, I don't know if you'll be able to see inside these, Erin. Maybe we'll just open one. What is this one? Rattle poppy. Winter sowing, right there. So rattle or bread seed poppy. Let's see, let's do one more. Uh, this is Larkspur. The marker stays pretty nice on the duct tape, not on the, I'm, I labeled them in three spots this year. On the 
jug on the tape and on a tag inside. Because last year I, I labeled them just on the jug and it wiped off and I couldn't tell what I had in anything. Oh, look at those. These might be the only larkspur I get this year. I don't think any of the seeds in my cut flower garden from that first seeding are still there. I think I'm watering nothing when I'm standing out there. I think the wind just took them all away. So that's been a good success. It looks like there's plants at every single one of those. Uh, I've really enjoyed the barn pots. In fact, the ranunculus, the red ones, they're starting to really bulk up. And each one of them is like pushing way more blooms. There's usually four or five blooms per plant there. Uh, I need to water them today, but I really have been enjoying the color, especially the dark red with the dark purple. I think that's really pretty, a pretty blend. And I don't know, I mean, it might be something that I do more of. I think I like it too because it's away from everything else. So I don't see like this red fighting with any of my softer colors. Well, it looks good against the white of the it barn, does. It's kind of like Americana. Yeah. You know, red, white, and blue a little bit. And I do think we need to get a flag, Erin. Especially, at least for 4th of July. We need to put something on this barn. I think that would look really cool. Especially yep. with the new barn lights and stuff. I don't know. Chicken coop area. Looking tidy. I had one extra bag of, was it, I think I'd land and see. And I just spread it right there. I need to mulch this whole bed. But the roses we cut back, the climbing ones are doing beautifully absolutely gorgeous they're going to be just covered in flowers it's going to be a really beautiful show i'm really looking forward to that but i've got other things coming up in here um there's the nepeta oh see here's the nepeta someone was like you planted nepeta right there sure enough i came in and planted the lavender which they're all coming back there's new growth all over inside each one of these lavender but yeah this is going to compete so i'm going to move this one probably just right back here at some point you know what? Hold on a second. I just realized that this is off. Oh. And needs to be on for Another the drip Bev. to go. Hey, Bev. Um, these pots are starting to, like, um, the chart is starting to fill in a little bit here that we planted just out of the little four packs. It's been so windy. I felt so bad for these plants because a couple days I came out when they were brand new, brand new planted and they were just laying flat on the soil surface. Um, and so I'm really happy to see that they're doing great. I've got weeds in my pots. Like, how does this even, how do they even find it? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Uh, we are going to do a weeding video here pretty quick, aren't we? If you I want got, to. I got plenty of uh, fodder for that video. <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, my pixie miniature peach, you guys. Look at this. Look at how gorgeous. I forgot to show you last year. Um, so this is the type that stays small. I mean, I planted it in this container two years ago now, I think. This will be its third season in the container. It is on drip. You can see the drip right here. It's hooked into the flower bed. I will be moving it, clearly, because, like, this whole area is just a little bit, like, under... in process. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be moving this. This is a wisteria. I don't think I planted it on a strong enough structure. I think I'm going to need to do some bolstering, but it is gorgeous, and it's really putting on a lot of size there. I'm going to go through this way because the daffodils are starting to really pop through here. I've got some rhubarb in this container. We had some leftover tulips that we planted in here, and they're all starting to come up. So they should be looking real pretty real soon. And then this whole brick area. Hey, here's some uh, Aaron's dad, my father-in-law. Oh. I didn't even see you guys come in. Been here for a little bit. Have you really? <laughs> Sue must be inside. Yes. Is she? So the uh, daffodils here, we planted, I can't remember the variety up here. I think it was in a video though, so we can throw the name on the screen. But they just started to push bloom like a couple days ago. And it's surprising to me that those are blooming before the little ones. I thought that little ones down below would come up and bloom a little bit um, earlier. But we'll see what happens. I do think that you guys are going to get what you want, though. I think we are going to take out this brick area this year. I think we got, we've got we got to. When we demolish everything else, it kind of just makes sense to lift all of these up. Whether or not we create a different type of patio area, because this is the most heavily used seating area in our entire property. We sit out here all the time in the evenings. Uh, so I do want to keep some kind of seating over here, but, you know, something different. These look like they were planting areas at one time. A couple of them had lavender in them when we moved in. Uh, 
yeah so i think it's just gonna have to be kind of a complete overhaul eventually all right we'll take a look at the pondless waterfall over here it's still here i unplugged it because i do need to do a little cleaning i plugged it in the other day and it's running great um, but i need to clean out some of the junk just from when the trees were removed and stuff i need to do that it'll stay here until we're ready to move it somewhere else i'm guessing it's probably going to go somewhere on the new property um, but because we were able to do it in a video and I was able to help a little bit uh, and we have the video to refer to I think it'll be pretty easy to put back together. Greg actually might even come back out So we might be able to do something else with him and do another project and have his help moving it somewhere else uh, We just didn't know when we put this in last year We had no idea where we were going to be doing the greenhouse. We thought in the future we might um, but we didn't decide until the last month last week of December that we were going to do the greenhouse. So anyway, that was not the plan to, to move this, but we knew that we could if we needed to because it's not a massive undertaking. Um, these are the boxes I was talking about, the ones that kind of match the size of the ones in the Esplanade urns. And this is going, this is where the pergola was. And so I do want to utilize these boxwoods somewhere else because they are expensive when they're this size. Like they were five gallon ones when I started. And they're a couple, three years old at this point. So they've really, like, a lot of them have bulked up a little bit. And they weren't in the sun. They were in the shade-ish. Um, so I'm surprised they did as well as they did. But I'd love to dig them up and reuse them and possibly use them in those pots. I think it would be really great. Um, I know that this area is going to maintain some of the same vibe, the same flavor. Like, I'd love to save the pallet walkway. But I, I do think this is going to change once we don't have a walkway through here. I think we'll, we will reroute the flower bed somehow. It may, this may become flower bed right here. I'm not sure, but I will, if in that case, we'll take the pallet walkway and bring it out some other way. I just think that that is so whimsical and it fits the vibe of our chicken coop. And I think it's good to have a little bit of that in every space. I don't want everything to feel formal. You know, like I love formal gardens, but I also like things like this that feel whimsical and magical in a way. I am hoping that we don't have to touch these flower beds very much uh, in the whole greenhouse process, at least from like this walkway back. This will all go, but I'm hoping like this back, we can just leave these things. If we need to move them, we'll have a little bit more time, but this really does fill in and it's beautiful in season. I've got some Mary Rose roses right in here, some tulips. There's a whole bunch of perennials and iris and other really beautiful roses and buddleia and all kinds of stuff that I love. And just recently got the fountain up and running. I had to come out this morning because I turned it off yesterday because of all the wind and uh, the pump wasn't working again when I plugged it back in. So I had to stick my hands in that frigid water <laughs> to get it to work again. I am very excited to do a little trimming. So this year we're gonna try to trim more often and we're gonna use um, Wilt Stop every time we prune. And I think it's going to keep this from happening. This is the result of trimming at kind of the wrong time and then you get tip burn because you're exposing fresh tender growth underneath and then you get like a really cold night or you get like a really hot day as the hot day was what happened here. Um, and then you just got this kind of look on it and you don't want to cut anymore because it's just going to happen again. <laughs> so here what we typically do is we let our boxwoods flush out their first growth and then we let that really bright shiny green kind of turn a little bit darker and then we go in and prune. But I think what we're going to do instead of that is just kind of trim continually. Like as we have time to do it, I think we're going to try to keep the shrub more acclimated to more fluctuation mm -hmm. so that this can't happen. And I think with that and the wilt stop um, I think we'll keep a nicer looking hedge and it'll be like more tidy more of the time as well because right now we do about two prunes major prunes a year and in between they get pretty wooly it'll just be a lot of extra work yeah okay so now what I want to do is just run right by the front of the gazebo show you the hellebores and then we'll kind of go out by the kitchen and then head toward the cut flower garden the thundercloud plum is looking nice it is it's beautiful oh and I do have to show you this too I dug up 10 serendipity alliums, two, four, six, eight, nine. Nine serendipity alliums from in front of the gazebo. And this is where I put them because I've got three Vanessa Bell roses, which are very soft yellow. And then the really pretty lavender purple of the alliums will be gorgeous. And then I was thinking back in here to do like truffle of pink. So I have pink, yellow, and purple. 
yes. proud of yourself? Yeah, I am. I think it's so pretty. Well, I just didn't think I was going to get around to getting these moved. So it just makes me so happy that they're here and they're happy. They look good. Okay, so I got to show you the tulips here, the Purissima Blondes. And the red ones have been here since we moved in and they are sturdy things because I've tried to pull those out several times and they still keep appearing. It's like, what is it? The bad, a bad penny? Is that what it is? What's the saying? I don't know. <laughs> They're bad, <laughs> but these are awesome. The Purissima Blondes, their foliage looks like variegated hosta like an autumn frost and when the tulip comes out they're kind of like a creamy color and then as the flower ages they turn more of the bright bright white so you can see I still have roses I think these are boscobels I've got five here and I've got some ginger wine night bar barks and then the tulips I want to come in and get the roses and put them in that new flower bed over on the west side I think that'd be beautiful right there so that's the plan here pretty quick I moved the three carding mill roses from this side, right in front of the angel. The Akabono uh, tulips are starting to bloom. And then another thought, this tour is gonna be so long. Sorry. Okay, another thought. You know that big Gothic arch trellis from in front of our cut flower garden from last year? We grew ruby moon hyacinth beans on it. Well, we were thinking, we figured out that these iceberg roses are climbers, especially these three right here. I don't know that the rest of them actually are, but these three and this, this one will probably have to go. But what if we put that Gothic arch trellis, it's long, where there's, it consists of three arbors with connectors in between, six feet wide, so we would have to move this, which this tree never does well here. So we put it here and let those icebergs grow up over it. So you've got like this little secret tunnel walkway into the fireplace area. And that way we can save these roses because I love iceberg roses. My parents have them. It's very, they're beautiful, but it's also a nostalgic thing for me. And they're so established. You hate to like just pull everything up. So if we can save those and use that beautiful structure, that arches from Gardener Supply, uh, I think it'd be really fun. Hellebores are in their absolute full glory right now. I've got about 37 varieties in here. It doesn't look so right now just because a lot of them aren't established. A few of them were here when we moved in, like clearly this one. That's one right there. That one right there with the dark color. But the fun part is that some of these are starting to seed themselves all over the place. You can see new little seedlings. I'm just gonna let them go because I would love for this whole area to be full of just hostas, hellebores, and hydrangeas. That's the goal for this section <laughs> anyway. Um, we did, and I, I did an Instagram thing like a little video showing our grid system and it's running right now you can see it dripping um, when we originally ran the drip for this area I did it in one great big swirl it started on one end and it swirled all the way to the center it never ran properly so Paul just came through he ripped up all of my crappy <laughs> my crappy drip tube job and he created a grid which is basically just a perimeter line that runs all the way around the outer perimeter of the side or the flower bed rather and then you tee in you run a straight run over to the other side and then you tee in on that side. So your water is continuously flowing into each other, into itself, and it just helps with flow. Like I see every single one of these drip lines dripping the same. And before it was like we'd get a pool here and nothing over here. And so we were constantly, we don't have a hose nearby. So it's constantly snaking a hose around sidewalks and flower beds and plants to spot water stuff all throughout the summer, such a pain. So I'm really glad that this is done, but Benjamin and I were, I was trying to teach him hopscotch the other day. Hellebores and stock looking good right there. There's some more grid. There's grid here. And then really there's nothing else. Well, there's lots of other things we can look at, but I think major stuff, we should go out to the cut flower garden. Okay, so standing out in front of the eventual cut flower garden, we are working on it and the infrastructure is pretty much set up. And the water is to the space, but the thing hasn't been programmed yet. And I'm hoping that happens today because I've been having to hand water everything. And you guys know, I mean, we've had some horrible windstorms. In fact, I just noticed right where I planted all my onions that one of these got blown askew in last night's wind. So I need to pull this one back down to the other end here. We just need to come along with some landscape staples and just tack this down a little bit better along the line here. But yeah, like all my flower seeds, I don't know. 
like, hello, or I don't know if it's just not been warm enough or if there are any seeds even in here anymore. I don't know, it doesn't really matter that much. We'll do something different if that's the case. I actually thought about going down and getting a bunch of four packs of cabbages. Wouldn't it be pretty just to have like a row of cabbage and you can grow them and donate them along with the onions. We pull those all up. We're getting, getting ready to plant potatoes today actually. There we go. Um, decided to use the obelisk, obelisks in the four corners. The eventual plan is to put a bench probably in each one of the corners so we have a place to sit out here with some big containers, probably with some kind of berry, like blueberries or something. And then maybe, maybe roses or something behind the benches, something very decorative. And then a fountain in the center, which I don't know, Erin. I mean, I, I fountain would be gorgeous, but it is nice just to cruise through here with the gator. <laughs> like there's nothing in the way. There's something nice about that. Sure. I tend to like neck down areas and I don't know. It is nice to have it straight. Uh, but having the obelisks in the corners really does help define things. I've really loved having those up. The honeyberries are doing great in their pots. They were blooming the other day. Looks like they still have blooms, thank goodness, after all the wind. So this one's the sugar pie. Look at all of these. Look at all those blooms. They're such a pretty shrub. Like the leaves are just really beautiful. And then the orchard here, you can see the fence is done in terms of being constructed, but they do still have to stay in the rest of the film. Fence, film, fence, whatever, you know. So we've got to finish that up. As soon as it's all black, I think it will help make it recede. And then we're gonna start construction on a little shed right here. Um, the whole idea is to have a place, one, um, that's sheltered a little bit, a little bit of shade for when we're working out here. Um, I would love to be, have a place to film videos. I'd like to have double doors up front that open to the cut flower garden with maybe a table in the center with a chandelier dropped over it so you can see that view from the other end. Um, we want a place to store some things, you know, some of our fertilizers and tools that we use out here most often, a uh, place for our supplies. And then eventually these apricot trees are gonna kind of grow like over the sides of it. Um, and then we are going to subsurface irrigate this. I think we're going to bury drip tubing in here. It's a specific kind, right? Yeah, Netafim. Netafim. How, there might be other brands, but that's the one that... What makes it different? Uh, I think just the fact that you can bury it. Like okay. it, it doesn't clog or something. Uh -huh. I'm not really sure. They, it's uh, becoming more and more popular, specifically in like uh, commercial applications, mm -hmm. where people have a grass walkway or a grass section that's maybe like three feet wide uh -huh. there really aren't a lot of sprinklers that you know go a long distance but right. but not very wide so mm -hmm. it makes more sense to just bury the netafim uh, right drip tubing so i think that's what we're going to do in here um and that way we can seed this with grass and have it be kind of meadowish um and i also want to plant some of those iris reticulata and um little minnow daffodils some of those that look very natural and really small and dainty. I just kind of want this whole area to feel uh, more free and more natural than like, cause this will be, you know, pretty row crops and very highly designed ish um, compared to this kind of, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it's coming along. Uh, we don't have any drip set up to the trees yet. So we've just been hand watering those. We did have the um, guys brought over a sprinkler or a faucet rather right here, which no water to it right now. Did they turn off the water again? Yeah, there was an issue over here um, that needs to be fixed. Like there was a, a break of some kind or something like that. So I'm eventually really sure. we'll have water. Yeah. Uh, and then the high tunnels is kind of the last thing. I think we'll end with that. We've got trees placed along here, but we haven't, we haven't planted any of them yet. And you can kind of see why. I mean, you kind of want to wait until like some of this big stuff because there's a big trench right through the flower bed there. It goes across the new driveway over there. You kind of just want to hold off till those things are buttoned up before you can go in and put in a bunch of bigger things. Um, so this is how we're using the high tunnels. This is all the stuff that was sitting on the ground around our other cold frame by the barn. Um, and Paul built some just table toppers that looks like the ones that Aaron and I built for the greenhouse. And they just sit on top of uh, cinder blocks and then he was out here people who are smart like this like who think of these things like i've got some scrap wood i'm going to create 
some little grids where I that will hold like specific sizes of pots because these are things that always fall down like things that just like there's a whiff of a breeze and they're just on their side so once we have drip in these um with if they're constantly falling over the drip like it just drips out onto the ground and doesn't actually water the plant so to have a way like right here see these are bigger some fine line buckthorns these are going to go to my brother and sister-in-law's house um these were falling over and so he's got them in this nice little holder so they stay upright i just love it and we don't need holders for everything no just a certain well, number like of these, plants these are hydrangeas and they stay very heavy and they're very like much more squat of course so they're not going to catch wind like the fine lines will um, but this way all the plants are up off the ground every year we just improve a little bit because you guys know we had this high tunnel in our cut flower garden last year we left it long so it was 50 feet by 14 feet and when paul was putting it up this year he thought you know what i bet you they'll like it if i cut it in half so it doesn't come out and block their whole orchard we hadn't even thought of that so we put up two side by side instead of one long one um, and then having everything up off the ground last year we had everything on the ground and it was a mess uh, so I don't know, just little improvements every year, just to make our lives easier, to make it more functional and make it more pleasant because you know, it needs to be pleasant. And if you're constantly battling with stuff falling down and like, it can become annoy annoying, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and, or you lose plants because you don't realize that it's not getting water and so on and so forth. So there's the second one right here. Got some other beautiful things ready for projects this year. I'm excited for these right here. These are Spring Grove Arborvitas. Arborvitaes. They get huge. They do like, uh, is it 12 to 15 feet wide and is it 30 feet tall or something Yeah, like something that? like that. But they, they are different than the North Poles in that they're much, you can tell, they're much more open. And they're, um, oh, they get a lot bigger. But they're just like much more architectural looking. I don't know. I'm very, I'm very much so looking forward to these two. A couple of these are going to church, right? Mm -hmm. So where we planted the other um, hedge of North Poles at our church, we're going to probably take a few of these and plant those there. These need water today. We don't have drip set up yet. So we're going along and hand watering a few things here and there. And that is it, you guys. That is what is going on at our house right now. We have a lot, a lot going on. We'll make sure to keep you guys in the loop. I'm sure, I'm not sure if you already will have shown a drone picture of what it looks like, but if you haven't up to this point, uh, maybe we can show you an overhead of what it's looking like at the moment. But it is exciting. There's just so many fun things and it's gonna be so nice for us and our neighbors to have grass planted and to have like more of this planted so that when we do get those big windstorms, we, don't, we aren't creating like the dust bowl of the valley over here because that's kind of what we are at the moment. That'll be very nice. I can't wait to see more green. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.